Right, good afternoon folks. Indy Truck Davy in the truck. Coming to you today from my depot. This is my second attempt at doing this broadcast today. I've managed to find myself a shady spot to park up. So I'm coming to you now from the new house, uh, sorry, the Eurocentral, where it is... Where it's sunny and 16 degrees, okay. Now I've managed to find a shady spot. I want to get through this as quick as possible, folks, okay. Um, obviously, we use people sharing my videos. It's hard to share a broken video. So I thought it was better just to do the broadcast again, okay. Hi, hi. Hi, Jane. Lenny. Right, so here we go. Coronavirus update. The first minutes we're getting an update on these numbers in half an hour, so we'll get these out. These are the figures for the 5th of the 7th, 2020. Tested. 278,833, that's plus 3,132 from Saturday to Sunday. There seems to be more people getting tested at the weekends than what are getting tested during the week, that's interesting. Right, positive tests, sir, the piece since the epidemic started, 18,296, that's plus nine new infections. All right, from Saturday to Sunday. Active cases, 424, that's down six. All right. And a eh, death's never a good number, but there was no additional deaths from Saturday to Sunday. The figure stands at 2,488. Combined community and hospital deaths, 4,155. As I say, I'm doing the broadcast again because my phone was overheating. I've managed to get a shady spot. I've got a half hour break to take. Um, so I'm going to rush through this broadcast. Okay. Right, Friday, this is the review of the weekend, Friday the 3rd of June 2020. Although the border war was won by the First Minister on Wednesday last, last week, um, the news hadn't filtered through to the not-so-bright Tory leadership in Westminster. Stepping onto the empty battlefield um, was Jacob Rees-Mogg uh, to declare that Scotland was an area of the country called the UK. Now, on making a statement... English nationalists and the Conservative and Unionist Party jaws collectively hit the flare. Right. As the Minister for the 17th Century and Big Lanky Looney declared England no longer existed. Right. Because by saying the UK is a country, he basically was saying to the English nationalists and the Tory party that England no longer exists. Aye, sorry, I say the transmission broke, but because these videos are shared, I want to get it out in one go. So even though Jacob Rees-Mogg has had thousands and thousands spent on getting him an excellent education at Eton College and on to the universities, um, it would appear that the idiot had never heard or read the Treaty of uh, the Union of the Crowns. He'd also never uh, read the Treaty of Union, which is there because the UK is a union and he obviously doesn't understand the name of his own party, the big idiot. You know, the reason why it's called the Conservative and Unionist Party, well, do the unionist bit, Mr Mogg, tells you that the UK is no a, a, no a country, it's a union, you silly, big, lanky piece of human awful. Right, moving on. UK government announces air bridges. That's what started the border wars in the first place. The UK the government this, uh, uh, declare, uh, um, announces air bridges um, without really any consultation again with the dev dev devolved administrations. And what consultation there was, it was just a case of, we're doing air bridges, we'll send you a list, uh, uh, that's it. Right. So anyway, um, because Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland are looking at these lists and want to take their time, because let's face it, there's legal implications and things like that. And then, of course, there's a lower uh, um, infection rate here in Scotland. We don't want to invite coronavirus back in. So, Astushi started. You see, that's what started the border wars in the first place. Astushi started. But anyway... Um, the, uh, the Tory party are howling and raving and saying Scotland was holding it all up. Whereas the Minister for Transport, Grant Sharp, he's, he took a much more grown up position on the issue. His statement made it clear that, that uh, he understood 
the other nations of the UK, and he used the term the other nations. Isn't that uh, interesting? You've got Jacob Rees Mogg and Bojo claiming there are no nations in the UK, only the UK, and then you've got the Transport Manager, Minister Grant Sharp claiming the other nations had a right to look at this and take their time on it, and he understood because it was a health issue. Now, Grant Sharp seems to be the only one in that cabinet down there so far to have taken a grown up point of view on any of these issues. Which sort of surprised me, because you don't expect the uh, Conservatives to behave themselves. Of course, the Scottish Tories were screaming, uh, ruining people's holidays, ruining people's holidays. Political point scoring by the Scottish Tories, of course. They try to claim it's no, uh, it's, uh, Scotland's no doing this because, or the SNP government's no doing this because it's a health issue and they want to get it right. The Tories here in Scotland are claiming the Scottish government, because it's an SNP nationalist government, as they like to call it, or a separatist government, are doing it just because they can, and it's ruining people in Scotland's holidays. Of course, the people in Scotland are not taking any notice of that, because they understand that it is a health issue, and they understand and they want the First Minister and the Scottish government to take their time and get it right. OK, moving on. Also on Friday, Murdo the idiot Fraser wants the daily briefings here in Scotland chucked. He doesn't want the people in Scotland to get the information they get every day for the First Minister, and he was claiming that the daily briefings were a party political broadcast for the Scottish National Party, which of course is a lot of crap. Politics, is, politics have never come into the daily briefings. Uh, where there has been a, um, announcements on policy changes, they haven't been party political, they've been health driven. So Murdo Fraser, want say the daily briefings a eh? um the daily briefings stopped. Now that's interesting Mandy, Murdo the unelected, I'm afraid you're gonna to have to stop that. Because if we're gonna have parties stunning on the list and nowhere else I, I, Lorraine, I'm back. I'm doing the broadcast again so it can be shared properly. If we're going to have a party stunned on the list and nowhere else, then when they, when they people get elected off the list, are we going to turn around and say that they people a, a, from the alliance or from a, the ISP, are we going to say they're no elected either? So with the Murdo phrase of the unelected, but we're going to have to drop that. Otherwise, we're just hypocrites if the ISP and the alliance stun on the list. Ah, uh, Turdo has got a brass neck, you're absolutely right, Ian. Right, moving on, also on Friday, Friday the Scottish and Welsh got a, a First Minister strike back at Westminster's politic and all these air bridges. They've said that the whole thing was shambolic and that they were uh, being uh, dictated to and that Westminster was ruling by proclamation. Well, that was an interesting way of looking at it because Westminster is, by effect, uh, ruling by pro proclamation. All right. And the reason why they're ruling by proclamation is because they gave themselves a power to date in the Brexit bill, they've doubled down on it in the crow Ravanis bill, and they have an 80 MP majority down there, so they can do what the bloody way all want. Thank you, Nancy, I thought it was a good uh, point. But, uh, so, uh, the Cabinet are ruined by proclamation in Westminster. There is no, I mean, if you take the air bridges, for example, there was no debate about it in, in the Parliament, and there was no cross-party interest in whether uh, which countries it would be allowed to participate in these air bridges. Aye, third time of day, Ted. Um, so Westminster is ruling by proclamation, but we'll get a wee bit, that gets a wee bit more interesting as we get to the end of Friday's report, all right? Also Friday, Professor Jason Leakes announces they had found the, the source of the cross-border infection in Dumfries and Galloway and Cumbria. The outbreak was linked to a hospital in Carlisle. What was interesting about that was none of the mainstream media picked up on the story. Now imagine it was the other way round. Now imagine it was Dumfries and Galloway General Hospital, or the Borders General Hospital, where the infection had come from. Now, if that had been the case, the mainstream media, uh, media in uh, the UK, which is all owned in England, would have been bloody well screaming, shut the border, keep the jokes out, the jokes are uh, bringing disease to our country. But because it was from England to Scotland, the mainstream media never even picked up the story that the cross-border contamination from England to Scotland um, had come from a Carlisle-based hospital. That's the sort of media we're up against, all right? Now, 
Finally, for Friday, this was, the, this was interesting, right? The, the Court of Sessions rules that the Magna Carta has no place in Scots law. Now, let's go back to what I was talking about with Westminster ruling by proclamation. Westminster is ruling by proclamation. They gave themselves something called the Henry VIII powers, and eh, they are just ruling by proclamation. What that court ruling on Friday in the Court of Session did meant that any proclamation down there that the government is announcing under these Henry VIII powers and under the powers they give themselves in a Brexit bill, Brexit bill can be challenged in the Scottish courts because they are using uh, English law and they are using parliamentary procedures that are put in place under English law uh, to make their proclamations. So any proclamation that Disney, Disney suits Scotland can now be challenged in the Scottish courts because English law and the, uh, the Magna Carta has no place in Scots law and they're using ancient, Scot uh, ancient English laws to issue their proclamations. Henry V, Henry VIII, whatever it was, Henry III or whatever it was. Okay, on to Saturday, the 4th of July, Pojo's English Independence Day gets underway at 6 a.m. as the pubs re um, at restaurants and hairdressers reopen. By the end of the day, police and other observers report that alcohol and social distancing doesn't work. Do as if we didn't know that. With the rising R rate in England and the English people being given little to no information at this point in time, um, we won't really know what the out outcome uh, of these mass gatherings in England will be. But what we do know is that when they opened the beaches and all that up and there was mass amounts of people travelled to the coastlines and things like that, they've had spikes in many English cities. All right. Uh, Leicester been in lockdown and there's a few other towns gone back into lockdown so that's just that's what happens when you don't inform people when the public messaging is no very clear right um, it was reported on Saturday that Bojo the Clown was on the London Broadcasting Corporation radio station promoting the idea of no deal being a good option for the UK the PM was talking about an Australian type deal, which is a number 10 code or, a, or a, a euphemism for no deal. As we all know, Australia has no trade deal with the EU, as was pointed out by Phil Hogan, EU Commissioner, Commissioner for Trade, in March of this year. I believe it was March, it was earlier this year anyway. Right, Saturday. It's revealed that NHS England and the NHSs in Scotland and Northern Ireland and Wales are at war with the Chancellor, Rusi Sunak. Rusi Sunak, at the start of the pandemic in the UK, said he would give the NHS and the UK whatever it needed. Well, it appears that it's been approached by, the Chancellor's been approached by NHS England and by extension, uh, by the extension that will apply to the, NH, the other NHSs. Um, and NHS England want 10 billion, so that would be 2 billion for Scotland through the Barnet Consequentials, 1.6 billion for Wales, and 1.2 billion for Northern Ireland through the Consequentials. Because it stands to reason if NHS England needs 10 billion to get its services up and running and to accommodate us and, and to have a, um, things in place in case there's a, an, an actual second wave and no just spikes. Um, I catch you later. And a and no juice spikes, then they're going to need ten billion quid, right? So the other NHSs are going to need it too. So the NHSs through throughout the UK are at war with the Chancellor, and the Chancellor's went back in his word to give them all this whatever it is they need to be able to do what they they're doing. All right, Saturday, some Scottish English uh, independence supporters went to the Scotland England border on the A1 to point out to Bojo that the border does exist. Now, the unionist press went mental. Now, the, the activists that went there knew the unionist press were going to go mental. Um, hello, Lorraine. Uh, but what they didn't expect is that some on the Scottish independence side would, would have thought it was in bad taste as well. Well, some on the Scottish independence side did think it was in bad taste. But it doesn't really matter whether you thought it was in bad taste or no. And I have to declare an interest here. The activists that went down there uh, to the Scottish border are friends of mine. We've been activists together for years. Anyway, um, it doesn't matter what you thought of that actual action. The main thing about it was it highlighted in the mainstream media that there is actually a border 
and it is there. And that Bojo and the big, eh, <laughs> the, the minister for the 17th, uh, 17th century, Jacob Rees-Mogg, were both incorrect. There is a border. And uh, the UK isn't a country, it's a union. Right? So it doesn't matter what you think about what, my, what uh, some of the activists did on Saturday. And as I say, I know them all. Most of them are friends of mine. Um, uh, they, they, they got their point. Hi, Marion. Nice to see you there today, pal. Right, moving on to Sunday, as I say, I'm going to blast through this so that this, this could be shared. Because having a broke, because you guys share the video, having it broken up twice because my phone was overheating because of the lovely weather is nae good. So as I say, I'm panning out. So we're on Sunday. The day after England's so-called Independence Day, irony aside, because remember, Bojo is an American, so he picked American Day, 4th of July, their date of independence for his opening up for COVID-19, right? That was him putting his boot into the English nationalists in his party to show that he's a yank and he'll sell, he'll sell Ameri uh, England out to America. But anyway, uh, um, what happened in England on Saturday should be a concern to the rest of his on these islands because the way they're behaving down there as if the disease had been wiped out is going to lead to a second wave and there's every chance that they're going to take it into Wales England, uh, well, Scotland and Northern Ireland. There may well have to be um, border control put in place um, if the expected spikes show up in England. Um, need to keep an eye on the time. Well, now we're doing all right. Right, also Saturday, uh, sorry, Sunday, Professor Anthony Costello, former director... F1 commentator. Former, former director of the World Health Organization, speaking of England and the UK by extension, uh, saying that pubs open before school says an awful lot. Basically, he was saying it was morally incorrect. Right. But uh, what was interesting about that was that uh, Professor Sir David King of the Alternative Sage Group goes much further and he claims that the UK government has lost the moral authority to um, govern because of their one rule for one, one rule for the elite and another rule for the plebs. Dominic Cummins and Bojo's da, of course, breaking the lockdown to fly out of Greece, that sort of thing. Their total disregard for the rules that they expect the rest of us to live by. So, Professor uh, uh, Sir David King of the Alternative uh, Sage Group has said that the Westminster government has lost the moral ability to govern our this pandemic, obviously. Also Sunday, car crash appears on Sunday politics. And he made an absolute fool of himself. Absolute car crash in an interview for car crash. Jackson Carlo, the story leader here in Scotland. Um, during that interview, he tried to claim that everything that Nicola Sturgeon and the first uh, and the government of Scotland had done was being done on nationalist grounds and known health grounds. He was basically on there saying that the Scottish government were doing what they're doing because they could do it differently, no because of any health implications. And as we know, um, Miss Sturgeon and the Scottish government have been very, very careful not to politicise this and has kept it um, basically a public health matter. But of course, car crash is on Sunday politics, screaming, stamping his wee feet and saying, this is all a political move by the separatists, right? But we'll get a wee bit more of the results of that as we get to the polling on Sunday, all right? Um, so, car crash is claiming Scotland's doing something different in England, but no on public health grounds. They're doing it just because it's a national, it's a nationalist government. You never heard so much crap, but saying that right enough, it is car crash. And if we look at the Scottish Tory party, or sorry, the, Eng the British Tory party in Scotland, they really are the lowest of the low. They've scraped this law out of whatever gutter it is they were lying in and shoved them into the Scottish Parliament. They are no, uh, they don't have any interest in the people of Scotland. They don't have any, any interest in the health of the people of Scotland. They are just there as house jocks. They're there as agency of another government and our Parliament. Right, anyway, the Tories are slumping in the polls. They're dropping a ton of bricks. Okay. Uh, on Sunday, the national reports uh, from Mike Russell that the Scottish government's const uh, 
He's the Scottish Government's constitutional minister and he's warned that Westminster is planning a huge power grab on devolved areas. He states the UK Government wants to set up a body, a quangle, to ensure that when the devolved uh, administrations legislate on devolved areas, at a Disney impinge on the UK internal market. There is no, at this point in time, there is no UK internal market. Although if you've been to your supermarket, you will notice it's coming because everything is being rebranded as British. But anyway, there is no internal market at the moment, but they're going to set up structures for there to be an internal market and they're going to put a quango in place to rule on whether the devolved administrations have breached the rules of that internal market when setting legislation in devolved areas. Basically, they're going to put a quango in place that can overrule Scots law eh, and Northern Irish law, because there is no Welsh law, as you know. Right, anyway. So that's a huge, huge power grab coming down the line on the Scottish Parliament. Right, a new poll out suggests that pro-independence support is growing, and it has been growing year on year, and it shows that it's solidifying, right? Now, over the last six months, there's been six polls. One put the unionists ahead, one had it 50-50, and the other four have had that independence in front. The last two polls done uh, this month, over the last fortnight, have base placed independence at 54% for yes, and a 46 for no when don't knows are taken out of the equation, right? The same poll also said that the SNP are on 55% um, in the constituency seats for next year's Scottish election and 50% on the list. The seat calculator says 74 for the SNP. Interestingly, the same seat calculator and the same poll suggests that the Greens will take nine seats um, given the pro indie parties 83 seats and a huge majority for independence in the Scottish Parliament, right? Now, as you know, we've also got a, the ISP, the Independence for Scotland Party, and you've got a right, a, right, a, um, you've got umpteen smaller parties, and you've got the alliance coming into play and all. Um, so, you know, well, if these parties are successful, eh, then that could take eh, pro-independence up a lot more. Um, but saying that, it also shows that SNP 1 and 2 is still a safe bet. Right? But I'm not going to tell you how to vote. This is what the polls point out. This isn't what I'm pointing out. You decide how you're going to, how you're going to use your votes yourself, OK? And he's more than 54%. It may well be, Andrea, but that's what the poll says. All right? Right, the polls show that the Tories have dropped uh, um, in popularity. Uh, they were sitting at 28% of the popular, 26% uh, of the popular vote. They're now down to 20% of the popular vote. And interestingly, Labour has slumped to 19% of the popular vote to 15% of the popular vote. So the Tories are doing a uh, 6% of the popular vote, and um, Labour are doing 4% of the popular vote. All right, so it looks like unionist parties are dying in their bahookies there. And that might well be where ISP and the Alliance should target themselves at these voters that are fleeing for Labour and Tory. All right. Now, Professor John Curtis says it's three things have contributed to the rise in support and independence since 2014. And he states that the, um, he states the no living up to the vow yeah, and Brexit and the handling of the COVID-19 situation by the First Minister of Scotland have all contributed to the rise in support for independence. I mean, people are seeing that Scotland are, th are doing things differently, the Scottish Government are doing things differently, and the Scottish Government are doing things better. So they start to, um, they start to, people are starting to look at it and say, well, maybe the Scottish Government can do better in all the different fields of the, that are out there, including the economy, because let's face it, the UK government's made a mess of the whole thing and they've tanked the economy and with Brexit they're going to crash it. Right? Right, moving on. Right. A wee bit of comedy to round off for a Sunday, all right? Um, on Sunday it's announced Bojo will give a daily American presidential style briefing. It, was appear, it appears that Bojo was paying attention to Murdo, Murdo Fraser on Friday because he's picked up the idea of a actually doing a party political broadcast each day. So Bojo's going to come to the podium 
each day on the, in the UK and he's going to pipe Tory party policy across to the people. Whereas the First Minister, on the other hand, who will be going, who is live at the moment, um, he, she's no giving party political broadcasts. She's giving public health messages. But you can bet your boots that Bojo's presidential style daily briefings will be party political broadcasts. But you know what it is? He's been pressured into it because the First Minister of Scotland, the First Minister of Wales, has fronted up to their people every day with reports. Right, moving on to Monday. I don't have a lot for Monday, as you know, um, because uh, my days are a review of the day before's. So I've just picked up a couple of stories this morning. The Scotsman is reporting that Neil Oliver is to step down as head of the National Trust for Scotland in September. All right. Mr Oliver's tenure at the top of the organisation has been a disaster. Good riddance to bad rubbish. All right. Now today, put a pubs reopen, well pubs with beer gardens, beer gardens and a outdoor eating reopens. Uh, okay, the first minister's no being as stupid as Bojo, the clown, she chose a weekday, a working day to reopen pubs um, uh, with, with beer gardens to ensure uh, a safe return to the pubs. Now play nice out there people. Don't get pushed and start hanging out the tap of each other. That's just not how we want to do things up here. Don't be hanging out in street corners with your bevy and uh, getting in people's road. Keep your social distancing. Stick to the rules. Give the give the a uh, bar, give the pub or restaurant organisation a list of the names and address of people at your tables in case there's an outbreak. You can be traced. All right. Right, the UK uh, government uh, will announce today 1.5 billion to help the arts. 97 million will come to Scotland, and he uh, adds add to that the 10 million fund that the Scottish government had put in place. That's 107 uh, million to help uh, the creative industries because, let's face it, the creative industries have been hit harder than anybody else. Right, that's all the news I have for you today um, on Monday. I hope you enjoyed the review of the week. With my review of the weekend, I've managed to get it all out in one go. Now, I'm sorry it didn't go out in one go this morning because we were up at 188 people watching it live. Now we're doing it 103. Right, eh, I've got five minutes before my break, sir, and I have to get reloaded. So let's have a wee look at some of the comments. Nay, pubs for you or in log. Nah, well, you know, quite right. Health before anything else. That's important. Um, aye, cheerio to Neil Oliver. Goodbye to bad rubbish. You're absolutely right. Um, what's the time? 12.35, so we'll call it 12.40. Opening mileage for the second run. 147.638. Right, what else we got? Morning, Davey. Always thought that Henry VIII powers couldn't be applied in Scotland due to the Act of Union not being signed at all. You're absolutely correct, Stephen, but the whole point of the court case to, to eliminate um, the Magna Carta for Scots law and, and, and the, to say that a hit came into place before the Union did and a Scotland already had its framework before the Union existed, then it will allow the Scottish Government to legally challenge anything that they pr uh, proclaim down there. Because remember, they are ruling by proclamation down there. That's exactly what they're doing, is ruling by proclamation down there. And the, any proclamation that doesn't suit the Scottish Government could then be used, um, or the courts could be used to turn it over. So that's the interesting bit of that, the court ruling. One, four, seven, six, three, three. Zero, two. We've already done two and three miles a day, and that's just the first run. Right, what else we got? Oliver is uh, an archaeologist. A job whose career literally lies uh, lies in ruins. Aye, well, that's his own fault. That's what he gets for cleaning the. That's what, that's what he gets for cleaning the, the, the Highland clearances. Never happened, and uh, it was just lovely, jubbly, nice people giving the Scottish people a chance to move across to America or Canada to start new and better lives. As we all know. Um, the clearances did happen, and they were a bloody abomination. Uh, Airdrie, Motherwell, Hamilton, Lanark, 
Christ, that is going to be a long day. Right, eh. Right, folks. I'm glad I managed to get this broadcast out. Sorry I'm eh, working around the boot. I'm glad I managed to get the broadcast out in one go. That'll let you share it eh, properly because eh, the broken broadcast earlier, it's not a great way to get things done. Right? So, for the third time of day, the third broadcast of day, because the first time it was done in two halves, it's Andy Truck Davy and the Truck coming to you today from the Euro Central in Central Scotland on the M8 corridor. Uh, it's a 17 degrees and it's quite a broad day, sunny. Um, so, have a nice day and uh, I hope you enjoyed the broadcast. I'm sorry the second broadcast was, uh, sorry, this broadcast, the third broadcast was rushed. But as I say, um, just the way it goes, I'm afraid. The phone was overheating earlier, the sun was battering and the windy went apart. It was fine, but by the time the clouds cleared and that, it was just way too warm and the phone overheated and shut down twice. No gammon on my pieces today. I don't have pieces in. I go into local restaurants and cafes and get fed. That's the joys of being a middle class truck driver. <laughs> and I still put snack bars and all. <laughs> I don't have sandwiches. <laughs> uh, right, folks. Have a nice day. I'll speak to you all tomorrow. All right. Ta-ra-da-noo.